fucking stupid clicky thing off. Okay, hello, hello, hello. Hello. Comfortable. I don't know if I had some notes. Right. Sweating. All right, hello, all you glorious people. It is episode three of my fancy new podcast. Now, you may notice I'm a little bit of a better mood than I have been for the last couple of podcasts. Mainly because it's like not 10 p.m. and I haven't smoked like 15 spliffs. But um, it's weird the little gaps and times I have to do these podcasts. And I've been wanting to film this for the last week and obviously haven't had the time. And now I've got the time, but I'm kind of in the middle of something, which I'll get to explaining. Um, if you are keeping up with all of this, I am not Dr. Tamara. I am not fucking okay. And I think I am going through the perimenopause. Now, um, if you've been following along, you'll know I've been talking about how I've basically lost my fucking mind, lost my sense of self and just lost a lot really. Um, but I am kind of on a mission to figure this out and make myself feel better or at least get back to, I don't want to say normal because there might be never any going back to that, but I at least want to get to like a baseline of feeling like, I'm okay, I don't want to like kill myself every day or other people or whatever. So that's what we are working on. Now, I've had some developments in my, am I going through the perimenopause? whatever this is um if you're keeping up you'll know I initially I'm not the sort of person who goes to the doctors but I'm gonna have to take this off guys sorry I was trying to be very demure very mindful but you're just gonna have to look at the bingo wings um or not because it's actually a podcast you should just be listening to this anyway apologies if you're watching on YouTube but what was I fucking saying right so I I went to the doctors initially there was not too much they could do but they did some blood tests and then the blood tests come back with nothing and then if you're remembering my podcast last week i had a full-on fucking batshit crazy kind of breakdown at my local local swimming pool and then I ended up going back to the doctors just to say like hey hello can you fucking help me um they weren't actually much help however what i left out of last week's story was like some other stuff that had happened but you know what there's only so long this podcast can go on so i'm going to explain what else has been going on now don't even know how much to tell of this story because I understand this is a podcast and like eventually the whole world might listen to this I don't know and I have to be mindful of what I am saying but I a couple of weeks ago I met somebody now you'll remember like in my first podcast I had told you like basically the last time I was sexually active was like I'm gonna say nearly two years ago now obviously nothing like that has been going on down there but I've obviously been having all like these what they're saying is perimenopause symptoms, like, you know, the losing the will to live, the depression, the, the losing the will to live thing, I think has been the biggest because I'm such an energetic person. And most of you know, like I do so much and I have been so unable to fucking do anything. Like I'm talking like, I'll walk to the shop to get bread and then I have to come home and have a fucking nap. Like I don't actually know what's happened to me, but all of that stuff's been happening. And then I met this fucking guy. Anyway, we've obviously broke my two year bloody celibacy thing. And the next day, I had some, again, I really wish I'd written a script or something for this, because I'm not entirely sure how much I want to share. But I guess I've always been quite open. I'm just very mindful now. I've got children who are growing up and might listen to this and be like, why the fuck is my mum saying this stuff on the internet? But do you know what? I mean, it's not like I'm doing OnlyFans. So let me just, let me just share. But this is about to be a bit of TMI. So if you don't like that kind of thing, or you're eating your breakfast, I would turn this off. Um, but I I started, um, basically, I was like bleeding out of my back passage. Now this wasn't a kind of, honestly, I've had like maybe two of these episodes over the last six months, but I honestly thought it might've been like a burst hemorrhoid or something. And I'll be perfectly honest, I did not actually have time to address it. And because it just happened for such a short amount of time, I just kind of let it go. Anyway, after we'd had this breaking of my celibacy, the next day, this bleeding started obviously out of my back passage. Now, I, the first thing, all of my friends, my friends who know me well as well, said to me, was like, oh my God, did you do anal? No, I fucking didn't do anal, okay? If I had, that would have been a reasonable explanation. But obviously I hadn't. And it wasn't just like a little bit. It was, do you know, at one point I was, what I thought was weeing, because it was like, shh. No, it was actually blood, like coming out of, again, the wrong fucking way. So this was obviously slightly alarming. However, again, life is just mad at the moment. And I don't, you always see these stupid people like saying stupid stuff like what I'm about to say, like, oh, I didn't have time. I didn't have time. But I genuinely just have that fucking, I don't know, life's just been a whirlwind. I haven't really had time. And because I've been feeling so shit, I just thought, I don't actually know what I thought, to be honest with you, but 
whatever. I ignored it like a flipping dickhead. And then obviously saw him again the week later and then the same thing happened again. And I spoke to one of my good friends and she was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why haven't you gone to hospital? So I phoned, um, I phoned 111 because I didn't just want to go to hospital. Phone 111 and they were like, oh, we will give you like an on the phone doctor's appointment. I think this was like in the morning. We'll give you an on the phone doctor's appointment. And and then they phoned me back like half an hour later and they say, we like, can you do a phone appointment? Like, can you actually come in? That was it. They was like, can you come in to the surgery? So I was like, yeah, that's fine. So I went in literally that day to my doctor's surgery and the doctor was so nice. But I'm obviously telling her everything that's been happening. And then she's teaming it with all the other stuff that's been happening. And then before you fucking know it, I have found myself on something called the bloody NHS cancer pathway. Now, I'm going to start by saying, obviously, I'm not ever going to lie to you guys and act like I'm too fucking, like I'm too bad or anything. But that is a scary word for anybody to fucking hear. So there was a moment where I was like, oh my fucking God. Like really like, oh my fucking God. But because I've had a week since this has all happened, I've kind of processed a lot and just, I don't know, I've realised this is certainly not going to be as bad as I initially thought it might be. And I don't know, even if it is, I'm going to figure it out. And I think this is what this podcast is about, is again, you know, when we do not fucking resolve our traumas and, you know, our past stuff and we let all this stuff kind of simmer in us, you're going to get sick. I am the first person who says to people, don't be angry, it will give you cancer. <laughs> then what am I doing? I don't know. I found myself here. Now, she did say to me, she was like, look, she said, we, it might not be, she said, but in order to get this addressed very quickly, she said, we put you on this thing called this cancer pathway and it gets you seen within two weeks, which I don't know. Do you know, all I ever hear is how bad the NHS is and how they're failing and this and that. And don't get me wrong, they're going to go private soon and it's probably all going to be fucking ass over tip. But for now, my current experience, I actually am pleasantly shocked at how they have dealt with this and so quickly. So I went to the doctors by, I think, the Tuesday I had had um, a consultation booked in for the Friday. Now, what's mad was I'm obviously the colour of me. I was supposed to be going to Greece, if you're wondering why I was so tanned. This is all literally like last week. They've given me the appointment on Friday when I'm supposed to be on a flight. And I'm like, can you do it an hour later? So I spoke to them. I had the consult. It's like a pre-op, not a pre-op consultation. I don't even know what. I think it was like a pre-op consultation. And they from that they assess if you can have it so from there they were kind of what did they say to me they were like oh we'll be in contact within 10 days anyway so i'm on holiday and they were like can you um do the following monday and i was like i i can but i don't even know what i said i agreed to it anyway because i was just like i'll make it happen and then and i think this is when i maybe started to worry a bit they called me back and they were like actually can you come in on the friday and can you do your pre i have to do another pre-op thing because i basically said i want to be put to sleep for this it's a colonoscopy i've got to go and have by the way which i'm sure some of you know or i've probably had and um, so i had to kind of be okay to have that and they've just literally it has been under two weeks from the start of me going well this all happening me going to the doctors and now I've literally got this operation booked for Monday. I am quite impressed at how quickly they've moved. Now, onto obviously the serious, potential seriousness of this. The man thing is, when I've been doing a load of Googling prior to like going to the doctors about the perimenopause, Google's always telling you you've got cancer. Like you could have, anything could happen. Like I just hit my elbow on the wall and the Google's like, oh, I've got cancer of the elbow. Like it's always trying to give you fucking cancer. So when I'm putting all these things into Google, Google and it's telling me I might have cancer, I'm like, don't be fucking stupid. Like, obviously I haven't. But then obviously this thing happening, it so clearly can be related to that. And then if you tie in all the other bloody stupid symptoms I've had, which by the way, I have learned this week, perimenopause can mimic the symptoms of colic, colon cancer or like the symptoms are very similar, minus the fucking blood out of your batty kind of thing. And so I... I think naturally I have been a little bit worried but the wild thing is I have been in such a dark hole for the last few months something happened on this Monday I don't know if it's because I'd been I don't even actually think it was because I went away I, I was speaking about this before but something shifted this week I don't know if you will feel it maybe not because by the time I post this podcast it'll be weeks down the line but I don't know if some of you felt it as well but I feel like something shifted and it's almost like the old 
even the old Samara, but like the me I've been so desperately trying to like reawaken, like shake alive. I feel like she's come alive again. Like I really fucking do. I just, I just suddenly realised, because I've been through this cancer shit before. When I was really young, I had like a stage three carcinoma, like a cervical thing. And I had that all lasered out, but it was so weird because when all that happened, I had just been introduced to Louise Hay. So I'd read her book and then got this, this like diagnosis. And I was like, I know, I know what that is. I, and this is, I don't, know, I don't know how you do these podcasts, but I'm going to do trigger warning for you flipping, what are these, uh, snowflakes. But I'd, I'd been raped when I was younger, like really young. And I haven't read her book. If you don't know who Louise, Louise Hay is, she's a fantastic woman. She, I don't even really know how to describe her, but she basically was the one who, not, I'm not going to say the original one, but, because there was other people, but she kind of made that connection between like body and like disease and how it connects to like past trauma. She herself had been very badly sexually abused as a child. She'd been through so much and she kind of then had like the cervical cancer and all these issues. And she just started to relate to, relate how, you know, often this past trauma, often, I was saying often this past trauma kind of relates to stuff that you haven't resolved, stuff that's happened in your past. So when I got this diagnosis for the cervical cancer, I was like, that was because of that. Like, and not only had I been raped after that, because I was a virgin when that happened, I kind of, you, you tend to go one way or the other, don't you? You're either going to be like a little timid thing in the corner that never wants to do that again, or you're going to become a flipping level 10 whore, which I flipping basically did. So I kind of just, I don't know, there was a lot of abuse that I did to myself and that I had experienced. And I just flipping knew as soon as I got that, that that was all trauma related. And if I didn't do the work that no matter you know, what laser or whatever you can have to, to get it gone, like medically speaking, it's going to come back. And this is what they say. Like, and it's funny when all this happened, I, that meme keeps popping up saying, you know, you can take the flipping supplements. You can go to the gym. You can drink the alkaline water. You can do all of that. But if you don't do the work, you don't do that inside shit. None of it's ever going to get better and it's going to eat you a fucking live. So it's almost like having all this happen has kind of shaken me awake because I'm like, what are you doing? I have been so angry for so long. Like my anger levels are not normal. I am the sort of person who will openly admit that my baseline is like, it's not nice, but <laughs> I will be nice out loud. But in my head, I'm just normally thinking, you dickhead. Like I just, I'm sorry, but that's what I'm thinking most of the time. But now it's not like I'm just thinking, oh, you dickhead. I'm thinking... You take care, will you hurry up and die? And then I'm thinking of a million different ways that person could die or I could perhaps kill them, which is so fucking insane. And it's all this anger just eats away at me, eats away at me. And I'm so, the main people I'm angry at is my fucking baby fathers, let's be real. I mean, that is a podcast within itself. But this thing where the weight of the kids and the sole responsibility falls to always the mum, regardless if you're fucking... Even if, well, some people are married and it still all fucking falls to them. But this thing where it's just like, we have to pick up all the slack. And not only do I have to pick up all the slack, I pick up all the financial slack. It's actually driving me a little bit insane. In fact, a lot insane. And I think that has been eating and eating and eating away at me. So when all this happened, I was just like, you've got to sort that out. You've got, you're not going to bloody get a cancer diagnosis and fucking die. I don't think anything like that's going to happen. But it is just a wake up call to say like, fucking sort it out. Oh my God. I haven't been filming this the whole fucking time. What a bastard bitch. That is so fucking annoying. I didn't put the microphone in. I'm wondering if I could just film it like this. This would be such a shame, man. I feel like I've waffled a lot. And I'm going to plug this in and see if I can um start this recording and maybe save this. Probably not. Basically halfway through the podcast. Because what the fuck was that? Ah, oh, God. Oh, right. I can't even fire myself. What the fuck was I even saying? I don't know. It, do you know what? Maybe I wasn't even meant to put this out. I don't know. Maybe it's a little bit too much for the podcast. I'm not sure. But I I kind of, when I set up this podcast, I was just like, I'm going to keep it how I've always been. Authentic. Real. I'm just going to tell you what the fuck's going on. Life is not all bloody sunshines, rainbows and unicorns. I mean, life is good, but it's, you know, not every day is great. Shit happens. And this is a prime example of the shit happening. And I guess, yeah, I don't know. But like I said, I did just take this as like a big sign to sort it the fuck out. Like I have got to let go of the anger. I have got to figure out how to make peace with stuff that, honestly, I don't know how to make peace with a lot of this stuff. Like a lot of the stuff I'm angry at, I have every right to be angry at. 
I'm not just angry because I'm bitter and twisted and like I've got nothing better to do with my time. I'm angry because I have a genuine reason to be hurt and a genuine reason to be mad at the situation. But I know in the depths of my heart, it doesn't change a damn thing. You could be angry at something all day. You think it's going to affect it. It's fucking not. If anything, all it does is affect you. And I know this. And this is the wickedest thing about all of this stuff. I know all of this stuff. Yet I have been sat here festering, sitting on this anger, growing it and letting it grow. I don't know inside of me when I could have just been I don't know being doing better basically anyway so what is the solution to this now most of you will know I am not um I'm not a big fan of western medicine but then I am a big fan of like them for diagnosis like like I said I think I said this before like if I break my arm I'm not gonna sit there and like try and hope it better I'm gonna go to the hospital and when something like this is going on I'm not just gonna ignore it and think oh you know I'll just smoke some weed and it'll go away because clearly that's not been fucking working. But I do want to get a diagnosis. I do want to know what the fuck is going on. However, I am aware the NHS love to just tell everybody they got cancer. It's like one of the biggest businesses in the world. It's not like I've heard this and thought, I'm not going to lie, initially it's like it's a very scary thing and I had so much going on. It was so overwhelming. But I just think when I actually you know, when your head clears and you just think about what it is. So I'm like, you know this is a business, you know the 10,000 different fucking cures for that shit, like, I'm going to be absolutely fine, but it is just, again, really highlighted how important it is to do the fucking work, and I hate that saying, and I hate it when people say that, and I guess, you know, again, in this situation, I don't even know how I'm going to do the work, but I am going to try, and what, what am I doing? Well, I'm obviously not going to be taking any of their remedies, but... I did, um, call in typical Tamara fashion, I called my lady with the frog poison, the Cambo lady, amazing far right, divine consciousness, and she's gonna do some Cambo with me, we're gonna do some other stuff as well, and for the sake of her business, I'm not gonna talk about that on the podcast, I'm gonna try and get her run actually, and we're gonna have a chat, and what she is comfortable to talk about, she is comfortable to talk about, but for now, she's my Cambo lady, and I'm going to be doing some cambo, I'm going to be sitting, I've, if any of you know what cambo is, it's like basically, if you don't know what it is, it's um, like a frog poison and it's a very, well it can be a very intense experience depending on how you do it, basically, um, so you get these, these special frogs and when they get angry they excrete like this poison and the poison gets collected and then, you know, the shamans or whoever administer it to you and how they administer it is they make like tiny little burns on your skin just like surface burns and then put the um the frog poison on that and it all sounds absolutely wild but it's actually one of the only things that's currently legal in the uk now i've had this done a couple of times and i can honestly say it's been a life-changing experience every time i did it the first time i did it I did it the warrior way because well I am Tamara and I go it hard. I I go hard or I just I go hard. That's just that I've only got one level and you know I think like the maximum you're supposed to have is eight dots. So I was like no I want it even like get, not even but I put the power in the three six nine. I was like give me the nine dots. I had the nine dots. It was forty five minutes of death, um but I very much needed death and a very much needed experience and I can honestly say coming out the end of the other end of that. I don't know, a lot changed in my life, a lot changed, I became much stronger in myself, I became much less of a people pleaser, and I just became, I don't know, much more of a champion <clears throat> of myself before I am everybody else, and I, I don't know, that, that cambo has really helped to shift a lot, and I've used it, for, I've been and done gentler sessions, where, you know, just had a couple of dots, and like, they're crying, and I don't know, and I don't know what it is I need right now, but I trust that she knows what I need, and I trust that the universe will guide me to whatever the fuck I need, and I am, I am just working on being happier, lighter, I think, not even happier, but just lighter and not carrying so much of this around. Because again, so much of this stuff, like I can't change the situation with their dads. I can't change that they're just fucking useless and their baseline is basically dickhead. Like that is, that is what it is. What I can change is how I react to it and how moving forward, like I let it affect me and not on some like fake surface level, like, oh, I'm okay, yeah. Uh, like like this that we're doing now no i need to actually be okay because i'm still not okay with it now if i saw both of them now I'll happily just fucking that ah, i can't even put the words to tell you like ah, see it's not okay i'm not okay but i am working on it because i know that is the one thing that is eating me up and if i don't fucking fix that well none of this is gonna get any better anyway so do you know what i am i'm really pissed off this didn't film properly but i'm still gonna post it anyway and try and edit it best i can and maybe look into getting 
someone to help me do this podcast or I don't know it's only number three you know the first one I chopped my head off the video the second one oh god I was so stoned but whatever we move and this one well I forgot to plug the microphone in but you know what I just feel like at some point I'll get there it'll be fine but bear with me if you've got this far thank you for listening currently I am I've actually got this operation this like colonoscopy book tomorrow and in true tomorrow fashion I have a um I don't know I just thought now is the time I can film this podcast but I've basically just taken something called Picolax which I think is going to pick a lax of bloody hole in my batty grease. And um, soon I feel like the heavens might open. So I've taken this off. I've had to take one sachet now. I've got to take one at six o'clock. I'm not allowed to eat anything for the rest of the day um, on this nil by mouth thing. And yeah, tomorrow I'm going to have this thing. But in it, it's so weird because obviously I've been so unwell for so long. I've had all this shit going on. And then I've finally got here. And I know they haven't actually told me anything yet. But it's like I know I'm okay. Even though what I will say... <laughs> I don't ever tempt the universe like that because you see when you think you know everything that's when the universe likes to be <laughs> no you don't know anything so I have toyed with the idea that you know it might be worst case scenario and I might fucking die and everything might be terrible and whatever but if that is the case it's my fucking time I have that is the only one thing I have truly believed when it's your time it's your fucking time so I really hope that's not now which is a wild thing to say considering how bad I've been feeling the last it's funny isn't it what you they say be careful what you wish for because I have been feeling so down. I've openly admitted that, you know, things have been very dark in my mind. I would never do anything to myself. I swear that to you. Not while I've got children. I just never fucking would. But the thoughts are still there. But it's so funny now being actually faced with that reality. Oh, well, you could be dying. I'm like, no, what do you mean? Like, what have you done? Like, ah, use your thoughts better, woman. So, but again, I didn't want to tempt the universe. So I'm just, I don't know. What will be, will be. But I'm not worried. And I feel, I don't know, I feel positive. Maybe it's just because I'm getting some good dick now. I don't know. But, um... Oh, no, that's another story for next week. Let me not get into that. But I don't know. I'm just feeling positive about this situation. So, I don't know. Life will be life. Life will be whatever it's meant to be. Anyway, I'm going to take my um flipping cliche So Could you notice I've come back alive a little bit? Like, God, that annoying toxic positive person that my son calls me I think she's coming alive again anyway that's good news for me because god knows I need my fucking good mindset right about now but I'm gonna wrap this up because um well I feel like I've fucked this up a little bit but I'm gonna post this anyway because you know what don't always get everything right all the time but like I said my dms are open I know why I'm not the only one going through shit right now I think we're literally especially everybody my age all going through this shit together so my dms are open the comments are open this ever is is a safe space all right and yeah you are free to vent or share or say whatever it is you feel you need to get off your chest i feel like sometimes we'd all feel a lot better if we just had a safe space to anyway this is your space should you need it right i'm gonna go i keep filming these podcasts and saying i'm gonna tell you about the products i'm taking that help me oh and let me tell you this this is testament to the stuff i've been taking and i am gonna this is gonna i swear to god it'll be the next podcast i film i'm gonna get all my supplements i'm gonna tell you everything but testament to what i take being so good is the fact that obviously i've got this thing and about four days ago when i knew this was gonna happen they said to me like you've got to stop taking all your supplements now I, I like rattle when I walk I take a lot of supplements but I've stopped taking everything and my god my god am I tired and I think my skin's getting wrinkly again and I my skin's pit well, no, that's the sun but I don't know those supplements man you, you wonder if you know the amount I spend a lot of money on supplements I take a lot and then I wonder like does it actually help because sometimes it takes such a while to make a difference you don't even notice it's making a difference if that makes sense but my god when you I've just stopped everything and I'm like so yeah god sorry i forgot this is a podcast that was me making like a dead face because basically i feel fucked but um so yeah but point is i'm gonna be back to tell you all about these lovely supplements soon and i will just speak to you guys well probably over on instagram because that's where i am mainly if you don't follow me there make sure you do anyway i love you all very much thank you for listening this has been tamara super fucking unfiltered have a lovely day Mwah.